So what we'll do now is we'll continue on with our SBS 2008 uh, installation. We're just going to go in and we'll now apply all of our updates. So I'm just going to choose to install the updates. We'll let that run. And when it's finished, we'll come back and we'll just uh, do a couple of other of the configuration steps on your small business server that you're going to need to make sure that SharePoint services and everything like that uh, is running effectively. So our updates are done and now we'll just restart. We'll let the updates complete. And you may need to run those uh, Windows updates a couple of times so when we come back into Small Business Server, if the Windows update icon appears in the sys tray again, um, just keep running it until you've uh, downloaded all of the necessary updates. So now we've finished applying our updates, what we're going to do is just run through uh, two steps here with Small Business Server 2008. We're going to run the um, connect to the internet wizard and then we're going to also run the set up your internet address wizard. So we'll just choose connect the, to the internet first. And you can see this is just going to run the process of making sure that the connection th uh, from your server through to the internet is working. So we'll say next. Um, the network is now connected to the internet and everything's good. So I'll say finish. Next step is to actually set up my internet address. So I'll click here on set up your internet address. And I'll say next. I already have a domain name that I want to use because I've already gone and registered oeccomputers.com. And I'm going to say that I want to manage the the domain name myself. I use an external DNS provider to manage all of that. Discussion about configuring and managing DNS is probably a little bit beyond the scope of what we want to do here, but I'm more than happy to help you out if you're having some challenges on that front. Uh, just contact me, richard.duffy at sap.com, and we'll see what we can do to help you um, resolve your issues. So I'm going to say next. So, what is my domain name? So, my domain name that I bought is oeccomputers.com, and I'll say configure. So what the system's now doing is configuring my remote web workplace. It's configuring Microsoft Exchange so it will respond to emails coming in at the oeccomputers.com uh, email address. And then it's also going to try and configure um, finally the, the internet router and open up those ports we were talking about before. So I'll give this a couple of seconds to, uh, to go through. So it's configured the remote.oeccomputers.com website. It's configured my Exchange email and again this is where you can potentially run into challenges with your router if it can't configure those ports correctly. And you can see if I view the warning details here and you can see that's what it's telling me. Can't open ports 2580, 443 and 987. And that's okay because I've gone and I've con configured that on my uh, router manually with my port forwarding. So that's alright. So I'm going to say finish and that stage of the setup process is now done. So to all intents and purposes, um, you should now, if you've configured your DNS correctly, you should now be able to connect to your demo server over the web by using uh, remote dot and then the, um, the uh, domain name that you've specified. So in this case, I've got remote dot uh, oeccomputers.com so I can now connect um, to this demo server over the internet using that IP address. And so what I'm also going to do is to remind myself that I've completed those tasks. I'm just going to tick the two boxes here that I have uh, done the connect to the internet wizard and the set up your internet address wizard. Now the next thing that you're going to want to do is to create a, uh, a SSL certificate for this particular server. Now if all you wanted to do was create an SSL certificate for this one server you could run the wizard process here. But what I'm going to do is I want to be able to build an SSL certificate that I can use for multiple um, services. So I want an SSL certificate that I can use with my um, remote uh, web workplace that's part of Small Business Server. I want an SSL certificate that I can use to secure my terminal services. And also when we set up SAP Business One and the mobility components, 
I'm going to want to generate an SSL certificate to use with that so that when I'm using the iPad and the iPhone and connecting to my demo data I can secure that with SSL so I want to create a wildcard SSL certificate and to do that that's a process I need to do manually so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through that process using uh, the certificate creation uh, capabilities that are basically in um, IIS the Internet Information Server and then I'm going to go and I'm going to buy a wildcard certificate um, from a certificate provider in my instance I'm going to use godaddy.com because that's who I use for all my hosting and domain names so I'm going to buy a certificate from them and use that so let's go through that process now first thing I'm going to do before I start configuring my uh, my SSL certificate is I'm going to just quickly restart my virtual uh, machine to make sure that all the changes that I just kicked in with the wizards have all taken effectively uh, it's just a, a little practice that I have that I anytime I've done something major like that I just like to to do a, a server reboot so I'll just go in here and do a restart and I'll tell it the reason for my restart was operating system reconfiguration and then I'll say OK and then we'll come back once the server is restarted. So now I've restarted my server uh, and I'm comfortable that everything uh, has completed. So I'm going to start the process of creating my um, SSL certificate. So first thing I need to do is create a certificate request because I'm going to need to upload that to um, my certificate provider in order for them to create the certificate that I need. So in order to do that I go start across into administrative tools and I choose Internet Information Services Manager. I say continue because it needs to start up with administrative privileges so I'll just maximize that. Uh, again expand this out and you can see when I click on my server in this case OEC SB server if I look at the uh, different options I have here if I scroll down one of the options I have is server certificates so this is where I create my server certificate requests so I'm going to double click on there it opens up my server certificates you can see I actually have some self created certificates already that SBS um, has has automatically uh, established for me I don't want to use any of those because in order for me to use those uh, those certificates I have to uh, install um, a trusted root certificate on every computer that's going to connect to this so all of my clients if they try and access this they're going to get certificate errors unless they've installed um, the special certificate that I've created by utilizing our wildcard certificate that's been created with an external certificate provider we don't have any of those problems so I'm going to create a certificate request so the common name here is if I was just creating this for my web server for example I might put www.oeccomputers.com in this case it's a wildcard certificate so I'm going to put asterisk for my wildcard .oeccomputers com. that means this certificate is then going to respond to any um, certificate request that comes from any machine sitting underneath that domain so what's my organization so I'll say it's OEC computers my organizational unit I'm just going to say well this is my head office my city well, I'm located in Panania which is a suburb of Sydney uh, my state is New South Wales and my country is Australia so then I'll say next now what kind of certificate do I want? Well, I want an RSA certificate and I want um, a 2048 bit length certificate. So then I'll say next. Now it's going to ask me what file name do I want for the certificate request and I'll call this certrec.txt and I'm going to put it on the root directory of my C drive just to make it a little bit easier for me to find it and I'll say finish and that's now done so the next step is for me to go on to GoDaddy and take that certificate request and put it up there so let's do that now 
So I'm going to open up my Internet Explorer. Now, one of the things you're going to notice is the default configuration has the Internet Explorer enhanced security configuration enabled on the on the server. This is designed to stop you from accessing um, websites that might be potentially dangerous without thinking about it. So what you can do is you can either leave that switched on in which case you'll have to manually add every website you go to to an exception list or you can go and switch it off so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to switch it off now the easiest way to do that is down here on the taskbar there's a little icon for um, the server manager so I'm going to select that that's going to launch my Windows Server server manager and you can see first thing I get for this server there's an option here which is configure IE ESC so I'm going to click on there and I'm going to say for administrators that's off and for users I can leave it on but I know what I'm doing um, so I'm going to leave that set to off and I know there's nobody else going to be accessing this server except me so I'll say OK to that that's now done and what will happen now is when I open up Internet Explorer it's now telling me that it's not enabled which is fine so I'm going to go to www godaddy.com and again you can use any certificate provider you like I'm using GoDaddy because they're the ones that I've chosen that's not a recommendation from SAP or anything like that it's just it, they're the, the guys that I use so I'm gonna log in with my account name now I'm showing you this just so you've got the complete picture you've seen the whole process of the setup from the very start to the very finish so I'm going to go into SSL and security because that's what I want to buy and then I'm going to scroll down here and I want a single domain with unlimited subdomains or wildcard so that's what I'm going to select so I'm going to buy this for uh, two years so it's going to cost me 183 Australian dollars per year and I'm going to add that to my cart and that's all fine so GoDaddy always asks you if you want to buy additional things a little bit like McDonald's you want fries with that in this case I'm gonna say no thank you it's gonna ask me again is there anything else I need to do with my order do I want to add a website and so on and so forth at this particular point I'm gonna say no thank you don't want any of that we're gonna set up our hosted website uh, later all right so I've got my standard turbo wildcard SSL for two years I've got one of those certificates so that's all good so now I'm going to continue to check out there's no specials going with GoDaddy at the moment that I've got any vouchers for I'm going to check out using my PayPal account I'm going to use my saved PayPal information and that's all good so what I'm then going to do I've read the terms and conditions and I'm going to place my order and my order is now been placed and already I've got a uh, I've got a, a little um, message telling me that the order is now placed so what do I need to do next now that I've got that um, that SSL certificate order placed I need to go in here into SSL security and what you'll see I have here uh, if I go up and I'm just going to actually make that a little bit smaller so you can see a little bit more maybe not quite that small 75% there we go and I'm going to go into my SSL and security go to my SSL certificate management and you'll see I have a credit here so uh, I'm going to go and I'm going to say use that credit and it's saying set up a new certificate and I'll say choose from my, my, my credits and there it is that's the credit that I've got so I'll say continue now it's going to ask me for the parameters uh, of this particular um, certificate all right so I've got a new certificate so now I go in here and 
and choose new certificate and the status is it's under initializing if I go into manage the certificate okay okay so I've got uh, a pending credit so there it is so now I'm going to go and I'm going to choose request certificate 